The decision by South African authorities to evict and arrest survivors of the Johannesburg fire, which killed 77 from a shelter which housed them, has attracted mixed reactions. On Wednesday morning, officials from the Home Affairs Department, the Johannesburg City Council, and immigration, among others, arrived at the Hovland Park Recreational Center, which housed the fire victims in the Johannesburg CPD, locked the gates, and evicted the victims. While South African survivors of the fire were given alternative accommodation, about 80 were found to be in the country illegally, were taken to Lindela Repatriation Center, a detention center for undocumented migrants. A non-governmental organization which has been involved in donating to the fire victims, the Kopanang Africa Against Xenophobia, CAGS, said the fire survivors already traumatized by the place were being forced to undergo biometric verification to determine their passport status. It described the process as deeply concerning, particularly as many had lost their documents during the fire. The organization which said it stands in solidarity with all the victims of the fire, regardless of their nationality, condemned the eviction of the individuals under such dire circumstances and called for an immediate cessation of what it termed inhuman actions. AVG News spoke to some of the NGO leaders who were present at the scene. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Inchesa City. I'm from the Refugees and Migrants Platform and also from uh, JMAP, which is the Johannesburg Migrants Advisory Panel. It's a platform for all organizations that are operating under the auspices of the city of Johannesburg in the migrant help desk which was uh, formulated by, uh, what am I doing now? which was formed by the mayor of uh, Johannesburg, Mayor Amos Masson in the year 2008 so yes, that's why I'm alright, okay, can you tell us yeah, what is the situation, what happened uh I have been advised uh, from the, I was in a workshop and I was advised from the migrants help desk that uh, there is an eviction for the uh, victims of the 80 Albert Street who were stationed at uh, Offland Recreation Center in Bess Valley. So I took off to go and monitor the situation. All right. And then when you arrived at the scene, what happened? Apparently, when I arrived at the scene, the, uh, the place was under siege. It, there was a police lockdown on the place whereby no one was allowed inside. Even ourselves as uh, migrant leaders, we have been facilitating the stay of the victims as well as providing them with foodstuffs. But um, what, I, what I noted is that Home Affairs was already deployed. There were subs, there was the MPD, and the uh, officials from Human Settlement from the city of Transpec. What I can and uh, what, I, what I cannot actually tell is whether this uh, eviction uh, no order was a legit one or what have you. I just heard about it and uh, it just came from the blue because according to my understanding, we we were handling these matters with human settlement and as well as uh, the city and nothing has been said so far about those people except for the humanitarian uh, assistance that they got from uh, well-wishers uh, who are the Red Cross Action Aid and uh, uh, many other organizations. But uh, as of today, uh, the community in terms of eviction, I don't think anyone was aware because all we got was an alarm from the affected. And um, how do you feel about how things have been handled? What is your comment? Um, you said, you know, there were police, there were officials, there was a lockdown, the place was under siege. Um, was this the right way to handle? Or what is your opinion in terms of how this issue has been handled? 
Uh, if you could ask me of opinion in terms of all this, uh, what I can only honestly tell you is that uh, I feel uh, the, 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 the decision that was taken was way too harsh. Way too harsh. And uh, did I not disturb you? No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> we'll always edit. Yeah, we'll always edit. I'm writing it down in any case. All right. Um, so you were saying it, it, the, the, the manner it, it was handled, um, it was harsh. The manner was harsh. And uh, according to me, uh, you know, as an advocate of uh, migrants, I, I would say it is more of institutionalized xenophobia. That's what I can say because uh, the officials who were there, other than them trying to assist, I saw them to be very, very harsh. They took it way too personal in terms of handling the, the situation. Because if not that so, they could have been in a position to give people prior notice they could also have uh, made sure that uh, uh, people are removed from that place with dignity. But removing, evicting people while he's arresting them, throwing them into home affairs vans, and those people, if you look at it, uh, they've lost their documentation in the fire. Some of them no longer even know when and how to get their documents. And what will be there, what is next in their life, it's so disheartening to even think of. And then in terms of uh, Denver, um, there is no place that they've been moved to. What do you understand about where are they being taken to? <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. I don't even want to... Conference. I don't even want to, to, to comment that self. Why? Uh, one, it, just Denver, that, that place by itself in, in the city, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a xenophobic place. We have seen a lot of damages coming out of Denver. We have seen Dudula hosting itself in Denver and whatever. And how would you expect uh, Nani nationals to go and stay amongst the most hostile people in South Africa? For me, it's, it's, not, it's like it does not exist there. Whatever they are talking about does not exist. If you ask me openly, that right. does not exist. I mean, were you part of the decision in terms of where people are being taken to, um, did you go and inspect, did anyone go and inspect for organizations that working with migrants, especially the victims of the fire, were you part of that decision to say, okay, Denver is the most suitable, or how was that decision taken? That decision was taken, uh, it was a draconian decision, you know, sometimes I say when, when, when everybody is a liberty, doing something that he feels like to the uh, hopeless and uh, the voiceless they just do anything and in this regard I also see it as uh, the, the community that is affected has been taken advantage of and uh, that was also um, enhanced by the morale of the people that were uh, segregated put in the bus to be going to Denver those are locals, they are South Africans but you were there, you witnessed them uh, uh, even shouting to say this corrupt ANC government, corrupt officials, we want our friends, we want our relatives who have been together, why divide us? So that itself can tell you the context of how things have been done. In the, for me, it's just an inhuman operation. That's what I can say. However, the officials gave a different explanation. Uh, the relocation area is in Denver, and 
um, what we have done now um, with the assistance of home affairs, because unfortunately, as it speaks to um, foreign nationals, we are directed by home affairs. We as humans have more. We don't deal with immigration laws. That's a fact. So in terms of our policies, we get directed by home affairs in terms of who is a, is a beneficiary, who qualifies, as it speaks to foreign nationals. So what we've done, what you see there behind you, is uh, we've got a bus and a truck where we have loaded the belongings and the people, the beneficiaries that we are relocating to uh, the Denver um, TRD. So what you see today is a relocation and we've got Home Affairs here to deal with the other aspects and Home Affairs, I'm sure um, we'll give them the opportunity to speak in terms of what they are doing. Thank you. Just, uh, is it only South Africans that will be going to the Denver? We've got South Africans and we've got one naturalized South African. So there is a foreign national who is legal in the country in terms of our, of our policies and we are obligated because this is a naturalized South African. In, in, Sorry, in principle, it's naturalized as a South African. I understand. If you, if you find someone who's not naturalized but they're here on legal papers, what would you do with them? Home Affairs will speak to that. Yeah. So is even the, where is Denver and what kind of place is it? Like another shelter or what kind of place? It's a, TRA, it's, a, it's a transitional relocation area. Um, we link it up with UISP. It's next to, to the Denver informal settlement. Okay, sorry. Uh, you mentioned there was a delay. Um, can you just speak about what, what was the cause of the delay and maybe some of the challenges you faced by any of the I can't speak to the detail of the delays, but. Um, Various aspects, such as identifying the flight, number one, number two, and yeah, the weather, the heavy storms that we had also delayed the construction of the buildings. Colleagues, we need to make Thank way you. there's a party that must come out. Yeah.